and all the way from you know Guatemala, which really just brings home the fact that we're really globally in this all together. Um, we are going to hear more about uh, what's happening with Uncommon Cacao, and Emily is going to share a little bit with us. Great. Thank you so much, Cesare. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Emily Stone. I'm the CEO and founder of Uncommon Cacao. And um, I don't have slides, so you'll just be looking at me with this background of cocoa beans. Um, in today's world of sheltering in place and social distancing, we all know that we need chocolate now more than ever. I hope you all have some chocolate bars that you're enjoying to get you through the um, challenging emotional times of sheltering in place. Um, we do know that on a deep emotional level, but actually the numbers show it too. Chocolate was recession proof in 2008 and 2009. And online sales for chocolate manufacturers this month are up as much as 500% as consumers are indulging more in sweets to get them through these rough times. Um, overall, consumers are seeking out healthier options in chocolate over recent years. And as a result, the premium segment of chocolate um, with higher cacao content and fewer and cleaner ingredients has been growing six times faster than bulk chocolate. My company, Uncommon Cacao, has worked since 2010 connecting smallholder farmers with this fast growing premium and craft chocolate industry. Um, these chocolate makers need high quality, ethically sourced cacao to make their products. And we have been a leading distributor into the segment since 2016. We make money by purchasing wet cacao from farmers at our operations here in Guatemala and in Belize, uh, fermenting it and drying it, exporting it, importing it, and distributing to over 250 premium and craft chocolate makers around the world. Uh, we work primarily with bean to bar chocolate makers, which is a market that exploded in the last 10 years from less than a dozen manufacturers in 2009 to over 500 bean to bar companies today. Unfortunately, a lot of these makers, a big part of our market, have been struggling during COVID times as their factory stores and their specialty retail channels have been shuttered. The essential workers in the chocolate supply chain extend far beyond the US borders to countries along the tropical belt. Overall, 90% of the world's cocoa beans are produced by over 6 million smallholder farming families. And despite producing the raw materials for one of the world's most beloved treats, over 80% of these families are still living on less than $3 a day. Uncommon Cacao provides market access for over 5,000 smallholder farming families across eight countries in Latin America and East and West Africa. Um, we produce annual transparency reports, uh, including social and environmental indicators. And over the last two years alone, we've seen income growth, incomes grow by over 150% on average across our network. Today, however, these farmers, processors, and exporters are essential workers with zero safety net, as their governments are not able to provide the economic support that the US and Europe are. Um, Chris, uh, Nick Kristoff warned yesterday in the New York Times that we're not only facing a global health pandemic, but also a global humanitarian catastrophe, as at least three dozen countries could be facing widespread famine. The most important way that we as a company can create impact in these communities is by ensuring continuity of cacao purchasing so that families will have income that they need to weather the challenging times ahead. Cacao farmers are, as usual, at the highest risk within the cacao supply chain, not only because they're underserved by their health systems, but because fresh cacao right off the tree is the least shelf-stable form of all forms of cacao and chocolate. So it's imperative that farmers are able to harvest and sell their fresh cacao during these months, and dried cacao is shelf-stable for years, and we have proven that we can maintain our sales prices and market access for cacao harvested in one year for many years to come. Um, we are a public benefit corporation, a certified B Corp, and we're currently raising a $500,000 convertible note to do three main things. One, grow our portfolio, expanding into cocoa butter and cocoa powder, so we're more of a one-stop shop for chocolate makers. Two, moving more heavily into the mass market premium segment that sells in grocery stores and supermarkets, which is doing extremely well during COVID, and are speaking alternate supply chains and three, finance working capital for our companies. We can be sure that all of our essential workers around the globe are paid on time and in full for their hard work and risks to produce great cacao. Um, we've already secured $120,000 of the note led by Acumen Fund and are seeking an additional $380,000 to round out the close by the end of this quarter. Um, my goal is to make sure everyone can feel really good eating a lot of chocolate while they're sheltering in place. And we have a real opportunity here to change the system uh, towards radical transparency and farmer impact. I hope you'll join us for that journey. Thanks. Amazing work. Thank you so much. And uh, Emily, I mean, you had me at chocolate and impacting 5,000 farmers, but let's hear from Kristen. Uh, any questions we have? 
Yeah, thank you so much. So I've been watching Emily as she does her thing around the world for years and I'm always impressed. So thank you for this presentation. Um, I was having, I had to call out and call back in. I got out of the Zoom. So if you said the countries you're working in, could you repeat those? Sure. Um, Belize and Guatemala, we have our own operations on the ground. We also source from Haiti, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, Ecuador, Bolivia, Ghana, and Uganda, and soon the Philippines. Okay, that's amazing. All right, so this is really cool. And then how does it work um, with female farmers? Is there a difference there? Yeah, so we have over 33% of our farmer network are registered women farmers. We've made a real effort to not only make sure we're sourcing from women, but that they're fully registered and visible within our supply chain. And we're also a women-run, women-led company, and um, many of our suppliers are women-run cacao export operations as well, which is quite rare in the chocolate industry. Thank you so much. Jonathan, do you have additional questions? Sure. I just want to say um, amazing work that you're doing in so many places. Um, you, you may have the most global view of, of anybody on this call, but uh, given all the, the different countries you touch, um, what are some of the most striking dynamics that you're seeing right now, uh, given the current situation? Um, I think the hardest thing for us has been, um, you know, we work in a lot of very rural remote communities that don't have great access to uh, public information. And so we've seen things like sort of uh, pirate radio stations spreading misinformation and just a lot of fear and anxiety in communities. They know they're at risk. They want to be safe. Some of them have been self isolating and, and basically blocking off entry and exit to their village, um, which has been one of the raise reasons that our uh, job has gotten pretty challenging these days. We want to be keeping our team safe. We want to be keeping farmers safe. So we've been having to innovate a lot in new protocols to make sure we can continue to buy cacao safely so farmers can continue to, turn, to earn income uh, without putting anyone at risk. Excellent. Well, your work is unbelievable. Thank you so much, <laughs> Emily.